We are rating and comparing the conferences here on Mark Rogers TV. Please check out our introductory video, which explains the method to the madness. We do this each and every off season. Basically what we're doing is we are taking the results of all the Power 5 non-conference games. So we have closed it down to a vacuum, a silo. So we're not taking into consideration FCS games or group of five games. Yes, they definitely tell us and give us indication how well those conferences played and how good they are if uh, a Big Ten, for example, is losing to FCS teams or low-level group of five teams, then that should be a knock against the conference. If another conference, for example, is knocking off the likes of Houston, Navy, Boise State, those are quality wins. There's no question about that. But what this does is it closes the experiment down to results uh, that, that can be compared evenly. So the introductory video tells you exactly how we do it. The Big 12 went 7-8 and eight against the ACC, the Big 10, the SEC, and the Pac-12 this past season. That includes postseason play. So the wins for the Big 12. Really, no wins for the most part, except for West Virginia as a 3 seed defeating Missouri, the 14 seed in the SEC. Did the Big 12 gain its victories over downtrodden teams in the other conferences. These are pretty impressive wins for the Big 12. Oklahoma State, a two-seed, defeating Colorado, a two-seed out of the Pac-12, and the seven-seed Pitt out of the ACC. West Virginia with a win over BYU. So in terms of the major independents, what we did was we took their overall record and we slotted it with the other five conferences. So BYU, Notre Dame, Army, those teams, UMass, we took their record and we slotted them and seeded them in the other conferences and we averaged that seed. So BYU is a five seed. Kansas State with a big win over Texas A&M. Kansas State a four seed, Texas A&M a five seed. We explained the seeding adjustments that we had to make because the Big 12 only has 10 teams, the Pac-12 only 12. The other conferences have 14. So there's a seeding adjustment to make it fair. Obviously, if you're in a 10-team conference, and you're a five seed, that's the same as being a seven seed halfway down in a 14-team league. And then Oklahoma with a win over Auburn. Auburn the three seed in the SEC. Uh, Oklahoma the one seed. Texas defeated Notre Dame as well. Texas the six in the Big 12. That's an adjusted 8.4, for example, to Notre Dame's 11 seed. Seven wins for the Big 12. So in those seven wins, those seven teams for the Big 12 were a combined 65 and 25. And the reason I don't put the winning percentage there is because it's somewhat inconsequential. Because most of these wins, a lot of these wins for the major conferences are against the likes of the FCS and the group of five. So that shouldn't be taken into consideration. The key statistic here is the 46 and 17. So those seven Big 12 teams that won out of conference games when a combined 46 and 17 inside the Big 12. So it shows you how good they were against their league versus how good was the competition against their Power 5 league. So 46 and 17 for the Big 12 10, the Big 12 teams that won those seven games. 24 and 17, a 585 winning percentage for the teams that they beat. Pitt, Colorado, BYU, Missouri, Texas A&M, Notre Dame, and Auburn. They went 24-17 and 17 in their leagues. So you would expect teams that win 73% in its league to defeat, for the most part, teams that went 58% winning percentage against its league. But to go seven consecutive games and win all those games, that's fairly impressive. The seeding difference is what you would expect. Those teams that won the seven games were an average seed in the Big 12 of 4.34. The teams that they defeated in the ACC, the Big 10, the SEC, and the Pac-12 went a average seeding of 6.6. .6. Okay, take the eight losses. Were there any bad losses here? Well, West Virginia is a three seed in the Big 12, losing to the six seed in the ACC. Miami, not the best of losses there. We know Miami's a quality team, but also a three seed losing to a six seed. Not good for the Big 12 there. The other losses, definitely like seeded games, are not bad losses for the Big 12. Texas, a six seed, loses to Cal, an eight seed in the Pac-12. Oklahoma loses to Ohio State, the two seed out of the, the Big 10 Conference. 
TCU with a couple losses out of conference to Georgia, the seven seed, Arkansas, the nine out of the SEC. Iowa State certainly the nine seed and adjusted 12.6 seed in a 14-team conference, losing to Iowa, the five seed out of the Big Ten. Doesn't hurt the Big 12. Texas Tech lost to Arizona State and Kansas State lost to Stanford. All right. In those games, the Big 12, 55 and 46, those eight teams that lost those games, 55 and 46 overall, won 52% of its games in the Big 12. They lost to teams eight consecutive games that also were just three games over 500 in their leagues. Miami, Cal, Ohio State, Georgia, Arkansas, Iowa, Arizona State, and Stanford. So this is telling for the Big 12 right here that they lost eight consecutive games, taking teams that won 52% in the Big 12, lost eight consecutive games to teams in the other four conferences that only won 52% of its games. So that makes sense. That proves out our formula that those teams averaged a seven seed in the Big 12, an adjusted seven seed, and in the Big 10, the ACC, the SEC, and the Pac-12, an average seven seed. Not a good uh, showing for the Big 12 in those eight losses. So the quality of win, what that number means, and again, watch the introductory video, is that every game starts out as a 20-point win for the conference that won the game, a negative 20 points for the conference that lost the game. Then we adjust it for seeding. So for example, Oklahoma State's a two seed. They defeated Pitt, a seven seed out of the ACC. So that starts out as a 20-point win for the Big 12, but we adjust for the seeding. The two seed beat the seven seed, so take off five points for Oklahoma State's win, so they get 15 points for the victory over Pitt. Likewise, the ACC takes not a 20-point loss, but a 15-point loss uh, for the Pitt loss to Oklahoma State. So the average win for the Big 12 was 14. The average loss, we went through the same formula, so that's that number the lower it is, the better it is, 20.63. This number needs to be as high as possible. So the quality win average was 14. The quality loss averaged at a negative 20.63. So you take all the wins, you take all the losses and the points for each win and loss, and you either uh, you subtract the, the losses from the wins, and this is what the Big 12 shows for its 7 and 8 overall record, a negative 45 points. How does that compare to the other four leagues? We will find out and would love to get your input as well, right here on Mark Rogers TV.